Hi, 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 hi. Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon and today I am back on Vlogmas Day 15 with my December book haul part one. So books that I've been sent by publishers, some that I have been gifted and some that I have bought myself so far in December. It's the penultimate um, book haul of the year and the final one before Christmas. So it's very, very exciting. And actually I'm recording this on my final lunch break of 2021 because I finished work at five o'clock today. I've been like that all day, like trying to type things, get everything done. So uh, yeah, very exciting. Anyway, I'm having a lunch break. I'm filming this video. Let's get cracking. Although one thing I do need to say is if you were coming to my event with Fee and Jane on Sunday in Boris St Edmunds, sadly it's had to be postponed as Jane has COVID, bless her. She didn't write a message to her. Um, she's just more inconvenient. <laughs> Apparently it's an irritant, but not a very nice one, uh, but not a dreadful one. So um, I hope she gets well soon, but it is being rescheduled to February the 21st, I believe. If that changes, I'll let you know. Uh, follow my social media like Instagram and Twitter and stuff and I'm sure it'll be there. Anyway, right, let's get on with the book. So, first up from publishers, lots of 2022 books. The first of which is Shadow Girls by Carol Birch. This is the proof edition. It will look like that. Carol Birch is an author I've read quite a few books of and really, really enjoyed and must read more. She actually had one out last year, Cold Boys Wood. Was it last year or this year? Um, and I meant to read it and I haven't got around to it, but I really, really want to read that one. And so naturally, of course, I want to read this one too. It's out in April. I don't know very much about it at all. And uh, you know me, I don't really like a blurb, so that's the way that's going to stay. Then from the folk at Pushkin Press, this is coming out in May. Um, this is Antonio by Beatriz Brasher. And apparently Beatriz is one of Brazil's preeminent authors. Um, I have quite a link with Brazil. My ex-husband was from Brazil and I love the country, I love the people, I love the culture. I didn't get to know enough about it as I would like, but I would like to read around the world more next year. So maybe this will be where I'll be heading to one destination. And um, so yeah, I don't know. It looks like it could be a bit creepy creepy. I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but again, I don't know much about it at all. Um, and I didn't need to. Uh, so yeah. Now, I'm very, very, very lucky to have this, I'm aware, because a lot of people like this proof of um, Elizabeth Finch by Julian Barnes. It's out in April, and I'm very grateful. But I will say, Julian Barnes is a bit of a hmm author for me. So I've really liked some of his books, and then really, really not. The one about, was it about balloons and grief that I thought was amazing? I'm just looking for it now. Levels of Life, I thought that was absolutely phenomenal. But I haven't always got on with his fiction as well, so um, I'm intrigued to read this one and um, because it's a shortened so I will give it a whirl and I like the fact that it says we'd like to institute Elizabeth Finch we invite you to take her course in culture and civilization her ideas are not to everyone's taste but she will change the world but she will change the way you see the world so interesting very interesting apparently uh, get ready to meet one of literature's most memorable heroines and and also that I have mean have meant to read for ages have meaning to read Wow. Um, and also that I have been meaning to read for ages is Dorothy Coombson. And this is I Know What You've Done. Um, I've heard they're great, uh, super pacey, twisty thrillers. And also I'm really, really excited uh, to read more of her work because she's one of the judges for the Women's Prize next year. So uh, yeah, I've got this in paperback. I've got a few of hers in paperback, I think, and I've just not got around to reading her. So I must do that in 2022. This could well be out now. I'm not sure. Um, then we have from the folk at Atlantic. This is out in March and it's Mouth to Mouth by Antoine Wilson. Um, was that An Antoine? Yeah, Wilson. Um, and apparently this is about two strangers who meet at an airport. And I will say when I read that in the blurbs, I was like, oh, because I did read a little bit of this blurb because I wasn't sure it was going to be for me. Um, that's when I tend to read blurbs when I'm a bit unsure. Um, anyway, I was like, oh, two strangers meeting in an airport or a train or well, train station or on a train or something like that it does feel a bit done. But they start to share their stories and one of them tells a tale of how he once rescued a man from sea, gave him mouth to mouth, saved him from drowning, but kind of wishes maybe he hadn't and that was the bit I was like oh this sounds like it could be really really good so uh, yeah looking forward to getting to that one I'm so excited about this next one I'm doing them in order of size not necessarily an order of excitement but this is one of the books I'm most excited for for 2022 it's non-fiction from non-fiction from Essie Edgigan the reason I think I'm trying to go super fast is because if the sun comes back my lighting goes to absolute pot anyway um it's essays at the crossroads of race 
I love S.E. Duggan's fiction. I've read uh, Washington Black and also Half Blood Blues and thought they were both brilliant. I still need to read her debut actually, but this is one that I'm so excited for non-fiction wise and it's got praise from Bernadine Aristo, Attica Locke. Um, yeah, really, really, really excited for that. This is a book that I've had a proof of, so I've mentioned it before. It's the Connolly. It's the colony. What is wrong with me in words today? I think it's because I'm at the end of the working week. It's been two days, but it's a big day because so I'm trying to get everything done. Um, so I've got a slight brain fog. Um, anyway, um, Audrey McGee's The Colony. I really like books set on islands. This is one such book. I think when I talked about it before, it's about how um, and Andy just getting on with what they're getting on with. And then it's how two incomers arrive and try and change everything and how that does or doesn't go down well. Um, so excited for this one. I've also shared this one before. This is a finished copy though of East Side Voices edited by Helena Lee, essay celebrating East and Southeast Asian identity in Britain. Really, really, really looking forward to getting to that one and dipping in and out of it. Catherine Chove's in it. I mean, I adore, adored her memoir, so I'm really, really excited for that. And so is Mary Jean Chan, who's um, poetry collection I just thought was phenomenal. Now this is a ride and I can't decide whether it's going to be for me or not. It's Skylark uh, by Alice O'Keefe and it's getting a lot of buzz I've noticed. Um, Erin Kelly loved it, she said it's beautifully written and must read for anyone who's ever wanted to change the world and what's kind of made me think mm, I'm not sure is it says it's the mid 90s and rebellion is in the air. Skylark is an activist, a raver, a tree dweller and a world changer. Now a raver, one of the things that I don't like in books is drugs and I don't really like sort of 90s rave culture so I don't know if this is going to work for me or whether it's going to make me a bit cross. So we'll see, I might try it and see how I get on with it but um, yeah I also have to be really really honest, I really don't like that font. It's not for me. That is just not for me. So mm, I'm a bit like that about it, but I'll always be honest about these things. Then one, uh, another of my most anticipated books for 2022 is out in April and it's There, and more, ugh, there Are More Things by Yara Rodriguez Fowler. I absolutely loved her debut, Stubborn Up. Stubborn, I'm really tripping over my words. Apparently this is also I'm a bit Durkham's flurry today and apparently this is one of the side effects of discovering with Durkham's is you trip over your words and you get a bit forgetful so there we go I'm, I've heard that excuse and I'm sticking to it but anyway her debut Stubborn Archivist I thought was absolutely brilliant it looked at what it's like to be from Brazil to move to the UK and how or be actually is it that she's the protagonist is half Brazilian half British and so it's how she, yes, it's that, it's how she deals with her culture and then how she goes to Brazil to see what it's like and what happens when she comes back. There we go. But this, I believe, is about two women in Brazil who are living very different lives. And um, yeah, it's how they kind of, oh, I've just spotted that something's written in Brazilian. I know a tiny little bit of Brazilian Portuguese. Um, and again, like um, like Stubborn Archivist, it's written in kind of vignettes, which I really, really love. So yeah, very, very, very excited for this one and I love the fact that where it says image to come they sent me the image that's going to have something to do with seeing earth from the moon by the looks of it Ooh. so yeah I don't know what the plot is or anything like that I don't want to know I just want to go into it blind read it love it I'll tell you all about it well hopefully love it and I'll tell you all about it then I'm very very lucky to have this and this is an author who I have the most books on my shelves um, I've bought their books for years. I've read a couple of her books, but not that many. Um, and it is, you can't tell from this at all, but it's Anne Tyler's new novel, French Braid. She's one of my mum's favourite authors, so I might try and read this before mum comes for Christmas um, so that then she can borrow it afterwards. Um, although I'm a bit like mm, that about reading 2020 books, 2022 books in 2021. Um, I'm not sure what to where to go there. Anyway, um, Anne Tyler is an author I really, really want to get to more of next year. Um, and that could imply I might read a couple of hers. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but yeah, I don't know anything about this. I've meant to read more of her work for ages, so I shall head to that in due course. Um, then we have Delhi Wed's Destiny by Tomi Abaro. And it says, three women, three decades, a friendship of a lifetime, Delhi Wed's Destiny sounds intriguing. I know nothing more than that. I'm really, really excited actually. I'm getting quite a lot of books for 2022 where I don't really know very much about them, which means they might not 
feature so much in my books of 2022 that I'm most excited about video, which I'm going to hopefully do in the next couple of days. Um, but I am also really excited actually about the fact that I will be heading to these books that I know very good about and just seeing how I get on because my plan is very much to read books in advance of them coming out if possible or as they're about to come out because if you talk about a book too far in advance there's no one else to talk about it to um but um but also really really get to the backlist so I don't know why I went off on the tangent but I did then we have a finished copy of another book that I've talked about already um Beasts of Little Beasts of a Little Land by Julia Kim and this looks at I think it's career before it was North and South is that right um but um is yet to be divided into North and South and that I find fascinating because I'm kind of really intrigued by Korea um both North and South and its history and I don't know enough about it and I like I said want to read much more around the world next year so I think this is going to be a brilliant book for that and um yeah looking forward to it then this has arrived and I haven't owned it yet I thought I would save it um, but it's from a publisher and it says, excuse me, the Reverend and Mrs. Day invite you to celebrate the marriage of Chloe and Sam at Small Angels, the Church of St. Michael, etc, etc. So it's a wedding invitation. And then you have this beautifully wrapped book, which I'm now going to unwrap. It seems to be leaking petals, which is interesting. Um, so let's open it and find out more. Oh, it's really leaking petals. So, um, is it filled with, have they filled it with petals? If they have, no, where are the petals coming from? <gasps> That's like some magical mystery. Anyway, what a gorgeous um, proof. This is Small Angels by uh, Lauren Owen. And it says, he walks amongst the whispering trees and this will be, will ever be so. No help of ours could set him free from the woods where roses grow. And it's going to be a major literary event. So think on, there's that one. So that's the last one from the lovely folks at Tinder Press. I can't work out where all of these leaves and uh, petals have come from. How strange. Then on to, um, just for the Christmas period, I've opened up my wish list. It's linked below. If you would like to get me a Christmas gift, that'd be very kind. If you would rather support me in a different way, my Patreon is always linked down below too. So just putting that out there. And an advanced thank you to my Patreons because I'm going to be getting a new camera in the soils uh, because of their support so that's really cool anyway these have come from lovely viewers so first up we have from linda benewith jane um a murder by maggie nelson and this i believe is about her aunt who was murdered and i think the trial of her murder is what makes red parts which is why i've not read that yet but um this is all told through different quotes through um sort of poems and yeah, I'm really, really intrigued for this, um, a murder story with a difference. And I think it's going to be very emotional, obviously, because of the link between Maggie Nelson and it being about her aunt who was murdered. So we have that one. Then from the lovely Eve of Eden's Eve, um, I got this, which was up for the Giller Prize. It's A Dream of, Wom of a Woman by Casey Plett, author of Little Fish. And this is a short story collection I really love this cover it's just really quirky and bonkers um and uh casey plett's little fish won a lambda literary award and then what i liked about the story the story sounded amazing they sound kind of quirky and bonkers and that's why i end up getting quite a lot of short story collections i don't read enough i need to do more of that next year that's for sure and um, but in hazel and christopher two childhood friends reconnect as adults after one of them has transitioned in perfect places a woman grapples with undesirability as she navigates fetish play with a man and couldn't hear you talk anymore the narrator reflects on her tumultuous life and what might have been as she recalls tender moments with another trans woman so yeah really 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 intrigued for these ones there's a couple of queer um quirky short story collections that i want to get to actually in the new year and that is one of them and then the lovely cindy got me this which is boys of alabama by genevieve hudson and i've been wanting to read this for ages as well i think this is another queer novel um i'm just checking yeah i think so but it's also a bewitching tale and coming of age but i know that i heard loads and loads of amazing things about it and wanted to get to it and so it's been on my wish list for ages note that a lot of them are imported editions because i'm aware that i don't want to be supporting you know where 
with books that I could get from indies here. So that's kind of my rule on my wish list, just to clarify. Then onto books I bought myself. Firstly, I didn't need this book. I've had this book in several colours. In fact, I gave away copies of it in the original four colours they did in the paperback. And I have the Christmas hardback edition as well as the original hardback edition. <gasps> but I got Grown Ups by Marion Keys in purple because I spotted it. Purple's my favourite colour. This is one of my favourite books of the year. No surprise to any of you who've been watching for a while. Um, and uh, yeah, already read it, but needed it in a new colour. So I got it. There we go. Um, I got myself Somebody Loves You by Mona Arshi. Did I mention this in my last? I don't think I did in my last proper, but I feel like it did. What did I buy with it? I can't see what I bought with it because I know that I bought this from one of the book. And where was I? Anyway, if I have mentioned it before, you're getting to see this beautiful cover again, but it's about a girl who um, chooses to go mute and the reasons behind that. And yeah, it's kind of, again, told in very short, sharp vignettes. And I think... Um, Mona, oh, she might be a poet and has possibly got poetry collections. I don't know if I've made that up. Have I made that up? Maybe I've made that up. Yeah. Um, and I want to do a whole video on why I love novels by poets particularly. So that's something. I was going to try and do that for Vlogmas, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough video times now. Because so I think what I'm going to do tomorrow, I mean, everything's changed with my plans. I'm at home a lot more now. But I think what I might do is tomorrow do a um, read with me in front of the fire video. I said it tomorrow. I might do it tonight, but put it live tomorrow. After this one goes live today. I don't know why I'm whispering. Next is a really random pick, um, and that is Fantastically Great Women Who Changed the World by Kate Pankhurst. Um, and this is a brilliant book for younger readers, introducing them to these incredible women. But myself and Pip are going to see the musical of this, which has been created by the team behind Six, and also the writer of Kylie Minogue's hits, uh, Girls Aloud's hits, like, she was part of Xenomania and I'm so excited because I love that music so yeah really really looking forward to the show but I thought I would give it a read first sort of so that I know sort of what to expect a little bit although having been to see six and knowing the history of uh, Henry VIII's six wives I knew what I was going in for but didn't like expect it to be so amazing and so much more brilliant and everything and everything so yeah then two poetry collections that three poetry collections I got all the poetry that I don't have on uh, all the poetry that I didn't have that's on the Costa Poetry shortlist this year. Um, I am going to be doing a video on three categories of which I will have read all the books of by that point. Um, and then possibly me and my mum are going to read the overall winners of every category and kind of do a bit of a shadow judging the Costa, which would be odd because I did actually judge it earlier this year, but you know what I mean. Anyway, um, I didn't have all the names given by Raymond Antrobus, which is a shocker actually, because I absolutely loved his debut collection hugely. So I'm really, really looking forward to getting to this because I just thought, yeah, I thought, I just think he's amazing. Um, and actually, I think it might've been his second collection I read, Perseverance. Anyway, really, really looking forward to this one. If I have got another one to read, that's just a bonus. Then I hadn't heard of this one before at all. It's Eat or We Both Starve by Victoria Kenefick. I have read this one. I'll be talking about this in my December wrap-up part one, which I think is going to come on Friday or Saturday. Then we have um, The Kids, which I haven't read yet, uh, by Hannah Lowe. At first, I wasn't a big fan of this cover, and then I read the signs on the placards and saw the importance of it and I was like no no I do like what this cover stands for so uh, yeah looking forward to reading this one and the one book that I didn't have that I thought I had or maybe I had the proof of and possibly I've got a, 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 a like odd relationship with this author basically it's Jessie Greengrass's The High House and I loved her short story collection I thought it was brilliant and then her debut novel site I really 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 did not gel with it doesn't mean I didn't like it I just really, well I didn't like it but I just didn't gel with it. I could see why it was beautifully written. I could understand why a lot of people did get on with it. So therefore, I don't like to say I didn't like it, but I just didn't gel with it. It wasn't the book for me, but I'm hoping this is. I've kind of got good vibes about it. I've heard it's about climate change. I've heard it's about like Britain where in the future when things are not good, but how a found family is created and yet the secrets underlying it all. That's the savage blurb version i could be completely wrong but that's what i kind of got from it so i'm intrigued for this one and last but not least a book that i bought because i saw it on um see i read this book see i read a book 
I'll link their channel down below, but I'm absolutely obsessed with their vlogs. And, and one of their reading vlogs was about Mrs. March by Virginia Vito. And it sounded really quirky and odd. And um, I just love the cover as well, because it's like, almost like this sort of picture perfect looking to spot. There's a cockroach there. And I think it's about a woman who out of nowhere starts to question if she is a good person and if there's kind of a not so good side within her. And that intrigues me. So there we have that. So the the sun behaved for the entirety of recording that video. I'm aware I'm not wearing a Christmas jumper, but I felt I needed some green in the <laughs> grid of my video thumbnail. So I popped this on um, and green is pretty festive and it is hoodie weather. So please forgive. Um, I'll be back, like I said, tomorrow, I think with a read with me video. So if you're looking to squirrel away, I think I'm gonna do it 45 minutes um, and, and read, you can save it for another point or you can join in when it goes like probably about quarter past six tomorrow to sit and read. I'll be reading in front of the tree with the fire on probably a cup of tea and a couple of biscuits and having a lovely time and um, and i thought yeah i've not done one of those before and i know that people like them so i'm going to give it a whirl but let me know what you have um bought or borrowed from the library or um been given in the first half of december and i'll be back tomorrow thanks for watching all my vlogmas videos and if you've missed any do go and watch them even if it's just for a couple of minutes um just because one of the biggest things we can do to support the creators we like is to watch all of their videos not necessarily all the way through but um for a bit and also um to comment uh and like and the same on instagram as well because um yeah i'm aware that um i'm not always good at that and i need to be better so i thought i'd pass it on I'm being much better at coming back though. I hope you've all noticed that. Anyway, I'm waffling on. I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Bye.